Good morning everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. So today is going to be a little bit different. I won't be introducing any girls to you guys this morning. Uh, first of all, I wanted to explain some things about the hydroponic system that we've been doing because you guys have been asking about that and I totally forgot to update you guys, so sorry. So you can see we decided to stop doing the bottom shelves because it was a little cold down there and it wasn't growing extremely well so we're only doing the top three shelves right now. And I am a little bit behind because we're missing three trays. So it's growing really well. It takes about nine days for it to reach full maturity, which would be this one right here. I don't know, it's like six, seven, eight inches tall. And it's just really lush and really, really great feed. And the girls are really, really starting to like it. We've gotten pretty much all the cows that we try to feed it to on it now. So that's not a problem anymore, getting them to eat it. They do seem to enjoy it now. Or at least they tolerate it and they eat it, so that's good. So we've tried it with fresh cows, we've tried it with middle lactation cows, and we've tried it with cows that are around six to seven months along. And it seems to work best on cows from mid to six to seven months along. Cows, fresh cows, it does work good. They come up anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds. 15 being the later lactation cows. I wouldn't feed it to any cows that are past that date. So right now we are just waiting to get into that building over there because we're really excited to ramp this up because it does seem to be working out really, really well. Um, you can see I screwed up here. I accidentally left that one in the bucket too long, so now it's just a mound of grass shaped like a five gallon pail. So that was my bad. But So that's what I wanted to update you guys on. We are still doing it and it is still working extremely well. It is showing great results, so I just wanted to show you guys some of that. And I'm sorry it took me so long to show you guys that. Sometimes I'm like out there and I totally forget about things that I'm supposed to be doing, so I apologize. Another thing that we did, which isn't as exciting, is we did get this cart cleaned out. The cart that we use for milking. This is not very exciting, but it makes me happy. So now we had a whole bunch of junk down here, a whole bunch of water bottles, and just stuff that we didn't need. So now down here, all we have is our iodine, our liniment, and some leg bands for dry cows. Up here, we have another package of towels, some blue coat. We usually do have bag bomb in here, but we are currently out of bag bomb. And some of you guys have been asking if we listen to music in the barn, and we do, and I just found the radio, it was in the bottom of the cart, I thought I'd lost it, but it was just under a bunch of crap. So there's that, so now we can listen to music in the barn again, so that's cool. So yeah, looks much nicer, it's so much lighter than it was before, so that's also nice. But that's probably not that exciting to you guys, but it makes me happy, so I thought I'd show you guys. So now that I've showed you guys all that, now we can get into what this video is really about. So I just wanted to sit down with you guys. I saved myself a little pile of hay here so I could sit down and talk to you guys. So, hopefully you guys can see me. Just kind of wanted to take the time and sit down with you guys and answer some of the questions you guys have been asking. So obviously you guys know me as Taylor from Tay Farms. I work on a small dairy farm in Maine. We milk about 70 cows. We have about 10 to 15 dry cows at any time. We do not raise our own replacement calves because the average lifespan on our cows is from 15 to 18 years. But you guys already know all of that, but what you guys don't really know is a whole lot about me. So I was born and raised in this town that I still live in. I actually work in the same town, so that's pretty cool. So I have lived here my whole life. I've never lived anywhere else with the exception of a short time when I was like six months old, I did live in another town. But since then, I have lived in this very town. That's something that I absolutely love. I like small town rural life. I don't really like big cities. I'm not that into being in crowds of people. I just love the country life and wide open spaces, but that's kind of getting off track. So I am 23 years old. I know a lot of you guys have been asking that. I am not married. I do still live with my family on a family farm. What we do at my family's place is we have beef cows, we have belted galloways. We actually do milk the cows instead of letting the mothers raise the calves. We never actually had any luck with that. The mothers never really cared about their calves, so we always had more luck feeding them ourselves. So we do milk the cows and make our own butter and make our own make our own butter and drink our own milk. I apologize if this video is peppered with a calf bladding. I'm sorry for that. I should have thought about this more. It's not really a big operation yet. We also raise pigs and we have a couple milking goats. We raise a really large garden and we do a lot of our own canning and preserving and whatever's left over we will sell. My mother and my sister and my grandmother actually do a lot of the canning and preserving. I help out but honestly I'm over here so much that I don't do nearly as much as they do. In wintertime we also make and sell reeds and that has become quite a large business. My mother and my sister and my grandmother do a lot of that also and they are extremely good at it. I tried making one time and it was bad so I didn't get any of that craftiness but they do make beautiful ones and the one you guys saw on the barn was actually one that they made so they are just gorgeous. We sell them right from our place and we actually have a farm that comes and gets them from Rhode Island. They buy them plain and then they decorate them themselves and then they go back to Rhode Island and sell them out there. 
So that has become kind of a large thing. We also do maple syrup, which is exciting. We just started tapping a few trees and they are running really well. So that's super cool. We do a lot of those things, but really it's not profitable enough yet to support everybody in my family. So I do financially have to have a full-time job. So that's why I work over here. And also, as you guys can probably tell, I absolutely love it. So that's another reason that I work over here. So I hope that answers you guys' question. So how I came to work here, I know I have said this in another video, so if you're watching this twice, I apologize. But if you did not see that video, just about 10 years ago was the first time I milked here. I was around 13 years old. Um, Brent really needed somebody, so I filled in for him. So after that, it just kind of became a thing. He called me whenever he needed somebody to fill in if he needed a night off. So from around 13 until around 15 years old, I worked part-time here filling in for Brent. Okay, sorry you guys, I had to go get a drink of water. So when I was around 16 years old, I actually did work for another farm. They had a few more cows than this, around 100. But it was a parlor situation, and I did not like that at all. I just hated it, honestly. And that's not to put down anybody who has a parlor. Parlors can be really amazing. It's just not for me. I prefer milking at a tie stall just because I like being up next to the cows. I like being able to touch them and just kind of create a bond with them. I know that sounds weird, but I just really, really do prefer milking in a tie stall barn because it allows you to be close with the cows. And it's not that you can't do that in a parlor, but it is much harder that you can't really like hug them and make of them like I do. So I didn't work there but a few months and then I came right back here and I worked here until I graduated high school. Something else that you guys might find interesting about me is I was actually homeschooled kindergarten until high school and then actually went to an online private school from high school until graduation. I did not go to college for agriculture or for anything else. Honestly, I was just really confused when I graduated. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought for a while I wanted to be a nurse. But looking back, I don't know what the heck I was thinking because I don't really like blood or being around a lot of people, so that definitely would have been the wrong step for me, so I'm glad that I did not do that. So like I said, I was really confused, so I just decided to keep working here, and I think it was that summer that I graduated, and I was working here all the time. I was here from 5 in the morning until like 7 or 8 at night, and I was just here all the time, and I really, really fell in love with it that summer. Sometimes I think you really don't know what you want to do until you like stumble upon it, and this is it for me. I absolutely love dairy farming. I do believe I will be dairy farming in the future and I really, really hope it's here because um, I just love this place. So that was another one of you guys' questions if um, this was just a job or if I was eventually going to be dairy farming in the future. I have every intention of dairy farming in the future, so I hope that answers some of you guys' questions. I know I jump around a lot. I'm a really, really terrible storyteller and I'm sorry for that. All my words just get jumbled in my head and I go off on weird tangents. The reason that I actually started doing these videos, it wasn't to get famous or to make a lot of money or anything. I just thought people might really like to enjoy seeing how farming is done, um, like the traditional way. I really have to stop saying um so much, guys. I'm sorry. I don't think of another word to put in there. I really wanted... I can't do it. I really thought that you guys might like to see how traditional farming is going. Farming the old way or traditionally um, can still be done this day and age. I know a lot of people aren't impressed with the mega dairies, and that's really what the dairy industry is headed towards. It's slowly going away from the small farm and headed towards mega farming, and I don't blame a lot of people for not liking that. I don't like that either. I don't think that's any life for a cow. I really enjoy seeing these cows go out onto pasture and just lay in the sun and enjoy their life being a cow, live to be 18 years old, just have their own personality, be able to develop that personality because they have so much time in their life. I really, really love that aspect of small farming, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I just wanted to show that some farms, a lot of farms, even farms that are bigger than us, to two, three, four hundred cows, they do really care about their animals, and they really want to see them live their best life. And I know we don't have the coolest equipment to show you guys, and sometimes that does make me feel a little bit bad that I can't show you guys a new tractor or a new mowing machine or anything like that, where we don't have fancy gadgets and stuff. Then I see the cows out to pasture just laying down in the shade, in the tall grass, and I just... I realize that those things aren't what it's about. Obviously it would be wonderful to have cool equipment like that, and it would be great, but I do know that it doesn't make you any happier to have those things in life. So Somebody actually was commenting in one of the previous videos um, that barns in the Northeast are so outdated, and I thought that that was a really, really sad way to look at it because that's one of the major reasons that I love this barn. It's so beautiful, amazing. It's just amazing piece of architecture that people built so many years ago and it's withstood all this time and it's still perfectly usable. Um, and I love to see people still using old barns like this for what they were intended for. Because if you don't use them for what they're intended for, they will eventually rot and fall down like a lot of barns across the country are. 
And I just think it's really cool to be able to still use something like this. And if you can still make it this way, even though it is a lot harder to make it this way. It's kind of really made me sad to think that a lot of people think that way. I hope that it's not like a vast majority of people that think that way. I hope people still enjoy seeing farms like this. I know people do stop here a lot and say that they really enjoy seeing the cows out to pasture. And that gives you a really nice feeling to know that people appreciate stuff like that. So I guess that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope I answered all the questions you guys were asking and thinking. I don't think I forgot anything, but knowing me, I probably forgot one or two things. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. Keep it real, keep farming, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Hey, bye, girls. Nobody's interested except for Norma, who's looking at me like I'm crazy. So. Bye, guys. <laughs>